is the problem with mankind. If you see in the Sai organization, whenever we've had problems, those problems are arising only out of these two things. Somebody has not forgotten the good that he has done to others and keeps on reminding him again and again and again. Or somebody has not forgotten the harm that he has done to him and therefore he makes it a mission of his life to see that he gets even with the other person as fast as possible. How do I remove Vardhan from the state presidentship? Let me write a letter to the All India President. Let me write a letter to Mr. Srinivasan. Let me write a letter to Bhagwan. Let me see how I can drop him. How, let me, just because somewhere or the other Vardhan hurt me. So I want to get even with him. Secondly, we, we just don't want to forget the good that we've done to others. Suppose if I come with a report that, look, sir, in my team, my youth today have done 10 village adoptions so beautifully. Somebody will come. No, no. In my time, I did 20. He doesn't want to forget. So he'll remind this guy. Now, what is happening? <laughs> what is happening is that we are missing the basic point. We are missing the basic point that the Sai organization is an organization where we have come to learn that everything is done by Bhagwan and not by us. But here we are just the opposite. We have become such hypocrites at some time that we want to take full credit of what we have done, but on the face of it, we say, no, no, Swami did, you know, Swami did, you know, but nobody believes Swami did. You dare not acknowledge that he did and see what happens. Even Swami will go down one corner. Forget Bhagavan Jesus. I'll take you to class properly. Take you to the laundry. Reality check. I am not saying that all of us are bad. But this reality check is required because even if I am good, there are moments when I will fall prey to this doership. I'll tell you how difficult it is. The sense of doership can trouble you. I've said this example of mine personally many times, but I will tell you again. Because this is the problem between man and God. For all of us who think that we are great devotees of Bhagwan Chit Sat Sai Baba, I promise you that if God opens his book, your mind, name and my name may not be there in that book. Despite all that we have done, his, our name may not be in his book. Because he's looking for those people, as Brother was mentioning, not ten, only one. Somebody mentioned. Even that one is difficult for Bhagwan to mention in the book. And what is the problem? The sense of doership. We want to claim everything that we did. And therefore, you see the distinction, the Sai organization and the other organizations. I always try to repeat and remind ourselves that the Sai organization is not an NGO. I object to every time that somebody says that the Sai organization is an NGO. Sorry to say, we are not an NGO. We are far superior to being an NGO. We are a spiritual seva organization. We are not an NGO. And the culture of our Sai organization is very simple. Nobody gets praised for doing anything in the Sai organization. All praises go only to one person, one phenomenon, and that is Bhagwan Ji Sat Sai Baba. And nobody can stake claim to anything that happens. In fact, I have now discussed with my state presidents and we want to start a culture in the Sai organization. No felicitation functions. No giving any bouquets to anybody for doing some good job. No. If you want recognition for the work that you did, you are not a part of the Sai organization. If you want to give up the recognition that you have got and surrender it to Bhagwan, then you are a part of the Sai organization. The second thing which we want to understand is that the Sai organization is meant only for those people who have the commitment and the goal of improving themselves and not improving anybody else. And therefore, all of us who are here with the objective of improving somebody else, please leave and do not be a part of the Sai organization. Please make up your mind and come back again. But till such time as you make up your mind that you want to improve yourself, don't disturb the peace of other people, is a very clear understanding of the Sai organization. I hope you agree with that. Do you agree? And therefore, if you agree, the first duty is, from this moment onwards, stop judging other people, stop criticizing other people, is the fundamental law of the Sai organization. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, it is very important to remember the message of Bhagwan Shri Sat Sai Baba. To remember why this master came. This master is not a guru. This master is not a cult creator. This master did not come with any new agenda. This master did not come with a new religion. This master had only one thing. He had tremendous love for each one of us. 
and he had personally come on down he came from his magnanimous master power he comes in a small little form most dainty to come and tell you and i for the first time in the history of mankind brothers and sisters he did not come to make you and me his follower i strongly object to say that we are followers of bhagwan ji satsai baba we are people who are endeavoring by sadhana to become like him because he said if i am god you are also god and this is the mandate of bhagwan ji satsai baba he has come to revalue us he has come to tell us that you are not ordinary human beings we have the potential to become like him we have the potential to become as good as he is in every human form he has potential to tell us that look the path to me is as simple as you and i are one you don't have to look outside look inside and look at the beauty of the master while he made things so simple and so beautiful for you and me he gave us the path of how to do it also you know in this today's world brothers and sisters knowledge is a big problem there is so much of knowledge but there is no practice there is so much of knowledge but there is no action imagine all of us sitting here we talk of forgiveness we talk of compassion we talk of good relationships we talk of seeing god in another human being but if you go to see and do our own homework at night we do our own introspection are we loving our parents enough are we loving our family enough are we able to convince our own family about what swami's mission is are we able to bring seva in the concept of the home itself because the strategy of bhagwan ji satsai baba of transformation is very simple if there is righteousness in the heart then there is beauty in character and therefore these are two very sacrosanct things righteousness in the heart can come only when you believe that swami is inside me righteousness in the heart can come only when you believe that the master is guiding me from inside then there is beauty in character and character is that in a person whose thought word and deed is one and that can only happen when bhagwan says when you listen to the voice of conscience from inside and put that conscience into action then only peace will prevail upon us and that is the human value and therefore bhagwan is to always say human values is nothing but action 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 and action all the time and therefore this is the world of action not a world of thought process therefore we also urge let us stop debating on what bhagwan has said and let us just start doing what bhagwan has said and that is the mandate of the sai organization just practice what bhagwan has said let us not debate on what bhagwan has said that is the beauty of the situation and brothers and sisters look at the attitude how will we succeed we saw the beautiful goals in the morning the lovely action we do is really bhagwan bothered on the target is really bhagwan bothered how many uh, patients you have cured or how many surgeries you have done bhagwan is not concerned with that in the sai organization the seva has a unique dimension is a unique understanding on the contrary i do want to put before all of you for your consideration that let us create those samitis and those districts and those activities and those groups where people come together before a service project and determine that when we go to do this seva project today our goal is not how many patients we cured or how many villages we gave water to but when we began the project and while we did the project did we see the hand of god and at the end of the project when you come back sit together and say can i surrender this god am i carrying this with me if this test is passed then the seva project is successful not with targets that we achieve is what i really wish and urge that the entire organization proceeds further because swami is concerned with how many people we have transformed swami is concerned with how many how much have we progressed in our own understanding of faith happiness bliss sacrifice how can i keep my happiness intact and I, how can i achieve the art of not letting anybody else disturb my happiness and therefore i say that happiness is your birthright my birthright if we can't preserve happiness in the sai organization if we're going to lose it in the sai organization then we haven't understood the sai organization at all that's why i say every wife must ensure that she does not mortgage her happiness with the husband every husband must ensure that he does not mortgage his happiness with the wife similarly parents with children children with parents look we can't change anybody else we can only change ourselves and therefore the success of the sai organization in tamil nadu will depend upon the fact 
where how much all the office bearers on a second to second basis are transforming themselves herself and himself and that is going to measure the success of all achievements that we want in the sai organization and i do believe that once we tread upon this path the master is going to shower so much grace so much a blessing that you've never imagined in your life what can come but the test is i want to empty myself so come brothers and sisters let us understand the sai organization and its totality of amalgam which we have of all the activities if the end goal is that i want to surrender everything to bhagwan if the end goal is that i always want to remain happy if the end goal is that yes god exists and is inside me if the end goal is that my self confidence stems from the fact that swami is inside me what do i use the sai organization as and how do i practice this how do i sustain a continuous sustainable experience of this kind which bhagwan has come to give me and bless me with that situation if you understand from this perspective see the sai organization is so beautiful as a human being every breath of mine has to be in rhythm how do i keep this the breath in the mind has a direct connection my mind gets wavered and how do i control my mind because swami told me master the mind and become a master mind because that is the first step what is the point of singing so beautifully a bhajan and come out and lose your temper what is the point of singing most blissfully and come home and be an unhappy person but to keep the breath in rhythm i have to conquer my mind i have to keep my mind steady and empty what will help me in the sai organization bhajan will help me meditation will help me and in bhajan and meditation when i experience the bliss how to sustain that bliss study circle will help me to continuously to ensure that my sustained experience remains as bliss and happiness and empty mind that's what's going to help me nagar sankirtan will bring humility when my ego starts up and i feel pride no no i cannot walk on the road what will people think then i tell myself shut up there is nothing like ego just step out and curb your ego and join the whole gang become humble don't fight with anybody don't pick up issues with anybody constantly find out what is wrong with you and on a day to day basis on a night to night basis introspection and improve yourself is a question therefore bhajans and the spiritual wing of the sai organization is going to help me to calm my mind and listen to the voice of swami inside i tell you brothers and sisters we have this great habit of clapping when we hear a video clipping of bhagwan ji sat sai baba we did it even during his lifetime when swami used to speak so beautifully all is to clap all is to shout and we used to want i want to hear swami's clipping i want to hear swami's void i want but every night swami is telling you and me brothers and sisters that i am talking to you from inside at least listen to me what i am saying from inside that voice of conscience is the real voice of bhagwan shri satyasai baba in each one of us it is not the outside audio the outside audio is only an introspection only an inspiration because the real voice is inside the real voice is not outside and that's where we need to ensure that we learn the art of listening to and the sai organization the goal and purpose of each one of us should be the create and cultivate the ability to listen to the voice of swami inside and put that into action is very very important brothers and sisters to understand this fundamental things that swami wants us to understand come to the field of education the sai organization the educational field of bal vikas is an amazing thing it is a tremendous program where you teach and you learn yourself at the same time as brother shrinivas mentioned yes attend the bal vikas class in fact i'm slowly getting on to ensure that right from myself to all the state president and district president must attend a bal vikas class on a regular basis because if you don't sit in a bal vikas class you will never know what innocence is and what divinity is you'll only think that you are very mature you are a great guys but if you want to shed everything and become childlike then that childlike feeling comes only when you sit with the children and become like that therefore bal vikas is a great thing bal vikas has two objectives the guru herself becomes inspired and changed and i was happy when i was listening to brother natarajan yesterday natyagarajan yesterday after being a disaster management in charge now he's changed to become a guru and that's a great feeling for him that's a new life for jagrajan when he comes as a balvikas guru and that learning process is a great feeling and therefore the second thing we achieve in balvikas is we are training young children to do right in their childhood what is expected by you and me now at this age when we are trying to control the mind it is not easy 
At this age, when we are trying to inspire ourselves and listen to the voice of conscience inside, it's not easy. But for the children between the age group of 5 to 13, it is so easy for them. Because by constant practice, they will listen to you, because you are also doing it. By constant practice, that boy or that girl, by the time he becomes 13 or 14 or 15, is a master who has achieved the art of listening to his conscience from inside and acting in accordance with the conscience. And what a beautiful gift to give children at this age, at this time. Brothers and sisters, we cannot change the world today. But what we can change is to inspire and make our children capable of facing the world as it is when Swami says, face the devil and finish the game. That's what our children can do by facing the world with the conscience and power of self-confidence. Therefore, the effort to change the world is useless. But the effort to empower children with the ability to listen to conscience is definitely worth doing. And the Satya Sai organization is the only organization that has the wherewithal and the technology to help children to achieve this, brothers and sisters. And therefore, we must focus on the Balvikas program. It's a very, very important situation that we must learn. Come to the dimension of service. If the only barrier between man and God is a sense of doership, then the ability to serve in the Sai organization without taking any credit is the best school where you can learn and get over this barrier of doership. And that requires practice, brothers and sisters. It was many years ago, and many of you know that I used to love to do dramas in front of Bhagavan. Somebody from California challenged me that, Nimish, you think you are so great a dramatist? I want you to do a drama on a very important treatise of spirituality called the Tripura Rahasya. You heard of the book. It's a very, very powerful but very high philosophy book on the Tripura Rahasya. And he said, do the drama and show me. So he said, okay, come on, let's do. What is that drama? I read the book Tripura Rahasya and we realized that the crux of the entire book is that the only barrier between man and God is a sense of doership. So I said, very good, let's do it. We taught the script, we wrote the script, and we taught all the Balvikas children, 160 odd children were in the part, all learned the lesson very well. That whatever you do, don't take credit, offer it to God. We did the drama, the drama was liked by Bhagwan very much, and in a jam-packed Sai Kulwant Hall, everybody is clapping, Swami is happy, everything is happening, and Swami summons me on the portico. Moment Swami summons me on the portico, I go very loud, like a peacock proud, I go, you know how it is, no? Jam-packed, Sai Kulwant Hall, and Swami calling you in front of you, means it's a great explanation. So I go running, you know, trying to act humble, but excited in the heart, the, the blood pressure is already up, but I'm trying to be nice and cool, because you really can't jump and go there. So slowly, trying to control myself, going up, sitting next to Swami, then Swami in his typical style, both acha drama, very good. So I'm more proud, because Swami is smiling, the world is looking at me, everybody